When you're improvising, do you use stock phrases as the raw material? And if so, can you share some? Um, yeah, yeah, there are phrases that I always play that are stock phrases that I work from, you know, which are just like... Um... <laughs> put together from old phrases that I first started on, like... And now they're just all kind of messed up with other things which I learned like that, you know, which is... Everybody, Gary here with Pow Music, and in this video, we're going to explore some of Eric Clapton's self-described stock riffs from this cool video in 1968. So he talked about how some of the vocabulary he learned when he was first starting out has kind of metamorphosized into his own kind of stock phrases. But the main thing here is that so many great improvisers work from vocabulary. They don't work from scale shapes per se. They work from vocabulary that exists within those shapes, right? So it's great to know the shapes. It's great to know the theory. But without vocabulary, we don't have much creative material to work from. So I always tell students the best thing for soloing is to transcribe solos from the greats or to learn solos from the greats and then take the phrases that you really connect with and reinterpret them and make them your own. And then make sure you do the last step of understanding the context. Like if we take a riff like this, understanding that we're learning it, okay, in the key of A, we're playing it in that first pattern. It ends on the root note, you know, those kinds of things, but the vocabulary comes first. So let's check out some of the key features of these kind of timeless blues riffs that Eric Clapton shared. And then I'm gonna demonstrate how we could take some of these riffs and make them our own. And then I'm gonna challenge you to do the same thing in the backing track section. Now I would love to hear what you come up with, so please either share it in my Fretboard Adventures Facebook group or on Instagram, and you could just tag me at Pal Music and do hashtag Pal Music Challenge. As always, if you want the tab for all of Clapton's riffs in this video, that's available for Pal Music patrons, and this way you'll have both the fretboard animation and the tabs that you could work with at the same time. And if you want to go deeper in your journey of connecting the music with the theory, check out my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery program. The link is in the description. You'll also find there a bunch of free PDFs you could download of the five shapes of the pentatonic scale and the diatonic scale, as well as some of my other courses. All right, let's get into it. All right, so all his ideas were in A, and the way they sounded was basically we could just consider an A blues. So let's think about the chord A7 right here. Now we know that he was thinking more of a regular blues with an A7 as opposed to a minor blues with an A minor because he often hit the major third, which would work with that A7. So the way that he started the riffs is such a classic blues phrase. You'll hear that, you know, from so many great blues players. It's something I... SRV was my first favorite blues player. You hear him do, do that all the time. You hear Hendrix do that all the time. It's just part of the blues vernacular. So you want to learn these like really classic riffs. So this is one of them. Just that to start where we bend this note, the fourth, to the sound of the fifth or somewhere in between. And then we bar our index finger and we play those two. So the main riff he does here, and he kind of repeats it twice, is this. So 
So after this, then we come back down. So we really kind of accentuate this note because we go. That's the first half. Now I use my pinky when I do this. He uses his ring finger. He didn't use his pinky much at all. And I go. So then we do this hammer on pull off from fifth fret to seventh fret on the G string. Then we come down to seventh on the D and then back to seventh on the G, back to seventh on the D, and then fifth on the G. So. That's kind of the main idea throughout this video. And then he kind of does it again. But then after the second time, he goes. And that is a classic slide into the House of Blues. And then that hammer on pull off again. And then ending on the major third. Because the thing about the blues on a dominant seven chord is the minor third sounds good. And of course the major third, which is part of the chord, also sounds good. That major third really connects you to the chord. So you hear him a lot bend the minor third to a major third, or somewhere in between in that kind of blues middle ground. And sometimes he outright plays the major third. So really slow, we've got. So in that phrase, we've got so much stuff. Just that, you know. Just using the starting point and then doing something different. I'm using to phrase my what I'm using to influence my improv is just the little melodic devices in Clapton solo. So I'm coming from an ear place. I know how this is going to sound because he did it a million times. So I'm thinking about those little sounds. The I'm thinking of this sound. I'm thinking of this sound. I'm thinking of this sound. I'm thinking of this sound, right? So taking those sounds from Clapton stock phrases, I'm then gonna kinda try to say them in different ways. Okay, and then if we look at just the classic riff that he said he was inspired by, which was so a few things happening there again and then a little bend on this note right a bend on that note the minor third to that minor third to major third in between sound 
So I could just kind of change the the rhythm. <laughs> Right? Using that sound and just saying it in a slightly different way. And then if we look at that last riff, he starts in the House of Blues. So he's got a little motif here, this hammer on pull off. So we could do it in this House of Blues area. We could even do it here. So he kind of plays the same riff in two different places. Now here, the one thing he did kind of differently, once he got back here. It was all kind of the same, but the one new idea was the going to this major third from the one chord, but bending up to it from the flat seven. So, That sounds awesome. So now I combined So lots of ideas to play with there. Now I'm just going to put on a blues I'm going to improvise to it using some of these ideas, and then I'm going to leave 30 seconds for you to do the same, and I'll put a link to the full backing track in the description. All right, everybody, happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Before I go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the following upper level POW Music patrons, William Creighton, Andrew Vogel, Chris Watson, David Crawford, Derek Mickle, Don Stringham, Donald James Grass, Jake Martin, John Cushman, Joseph McCarthy, Kent Grissom, Lemuel Faustin, Michael Varney, Randy Wallingford, Sam Juans, Scott Lee, Sean Ellis, Stephen Pisano, Trampus Thompson. Thank you guys so much and thank you to all of the POW Music patrons that help make this content possible. Happy playing. I'll see you guys next time.